Broadcasting live from WOYK's downtown York Studios, this is York's Local Sports Show. Talking local sports on York's local sports station. Welcome to Game Day with Game Time PA on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Game day, game time, PA here on Sports Radio 13, 50 another week of high school sports action, bringing you all the coverage from our game time team. We have Chris Holland here from the York office, myself, and I'm from the York office. Matt Albone from the handle of our office, who's a little flustered right now with Eagles just traded a, a dump load worth of picks <laughs> to move up and take a quarterback. I haven't had time to really digest it yet, so I'm still I'm still pretty focused on the show. Later later on, I'll probably have time to, to freak out. Matt, so, it's cool. I can tell you how it ends. They still stink next year. <laughs> we'll see. Well, and, and this is all about getting a quarterback for the future, so it's not about next year right now. All right, still stink in two years. Philly teams love taking the headlines. They know how to make a headline, especially the, the Eagles. The Flyers are down 3 nothing. I want to remind Matt of that and any other Flyers fans. Uh, the Caps are on uh, after the, the show tonight. Caps pregame at 645. Caps Flyers at 7. Caps going for the sweep um what else we got going on guys this week york suburban christian named a new ad and a new hoops coach in the same day uh we'll talk a little bit about that delone dover lacrosse two inaugural programs right. uh two expansion programs basically yeah really uh Alabama was there to see that uh their arctic blast was last week that was i got sunburned from that eight hours out there covering 25 track teams in northern york uh the color classic was this week christian was there all, all of our top uh volleyball teams uh, and we got a whole bunch of other spring stuff uh, going on. Christian, I guess we'll get started right with the, the hard-hitting stuff, York Suburban. Uh, you were there. You, you got to do the story. What did they do? Uh, well, two big hires this week, obviously, adding Matt Marshall as their athletic director and Tom Triggs coming back for a second stint as head coach of the boys' basketball program. Uh, two guys who are familiar to York Suburban fans and, and the community because Matt Marshall obviously was an assistant coordinator last season with the football team. And obviously he held the county record for uh, passing yards and a career passing yards when he played for Spring Grove High School in 2006. Mm-hmm. Ironically, um, Thomas Merkel broke that record last season when he was on the sideline as an assistant coordinator. And then Tom Triggs, obviously very well known to the community, 14 years with the uh, Trojans basketball program. You know, a lot of accolades. There, he, he won their only district title uh, when he was at the helm. You know, he's been to the playoffs a number of times with them. And, you know, he's back for a second stint hoping to, to make a mark. And, and Marshall and, and Triggs haven't officially talked yet. They haven't talked, um, you know, since they've been hired. But, you know, Triggs seemed very excited to work with Marshall. They've known each other because um, there's been some overlap in years past with uh, Marshall being around the program a little bit, obviously. Uh, Marshall also has the connection with his dad, who's an offensive coordinator right. and a teacher at the school. So, uh, you know, Marshall is an unknown to Triggs and, and the rest of the community, but obviously he's he's very excited as well to, to get going there uh, when, when sports kind of start rolling around again. Yeah, and, and Marshall had a good career up at uh, ESU. We did a story on him last year. He, uh, he had an arm injury right when he got there that kind of hurt him. But he came back, ended up you know playing real well up there, breaking some records up there. But threw for almost five thousand passing yards at Spring Grove. He held the record for nine, ten years, I guess, until Merkel broke it this past year for Suburban with Marshall on the sideline, and they were pretty excited about that. But yeah, both Marshalls are, are at York Suburban now. Triggs, like you said, has been around Suburban. He's just kind of coming back. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Why why come back now after? Yeah, he had uh, he, he's been an assistant with with West York the last two years. Um, and that really kind of was his way of easing back into into being on the sideline and to being on the bench to to be involved with the varsity program and that's where he kind of got that inkling and I remember um, you know doing some research for the story in 2012 he told Game Time that you know he this, he when he stepped down it wasn't necessarily retirement and that if he got the urge to coach again he would consider it and when it was talking to him on the phone before it was made official he said you know during that time at West York he kind of got the got the itch again you could say that if the right opportunity came along then then he would get back on the sideline when the new york suburban job opened up after he talked with his family you know he went out and he said this is this is another opportunity i want to take advantage of and you know he's back on the sideline now we've definitely heard a lot of coaches recently who've stepped down saying that they felt burnt out so it's kind of interesting to see from the other way a guy who maybe felt that way before but now is is back because he misses it so much that was the whole reason he stepped down the first time yeah his kids had graduated from suburban it was time that he wanted to uh to kind of spend with more time with his family obviously coaching is a big investment big time investment right um and he wanted to take that opportunity to kind of spend some time and then you know kind of do his own thing after those two years of not being involved with any program Mm -hmm. that's when he he joined bill ackerman at west york and was an assistant there for the last two years and then again when when the job opened up uh recently at york suburban right. and 
he made the decision that this is a this is a job I want to pursue. And he'll have, he'll have plenty of opportunities to go against West York uh, from the York Suburban sideline. The York Suburban had a, had a rough year last year. Uh, when he was there before, they, they had a, they had a couple of good years, like you said, district yeah. championship. Uh, Mitch Kemp was there with them, and, and they took they went into a deep postseason run. And uh, Kemp is assistant coach now as well. But uh, good to see him back on the sidelines. A good uh, familiar face. And Marshall, a young guy with a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of ideas. Uh, we'll see how he does it. At York Suburban, we've seen a ton of. Uh, we talked about turnover in the coaching ranks. We've seen a ton of turnover recently in AD ranks mm-hmm. too. Uh, York High, West York, York Suburban, Cannondale, uh, New, New Oxford. Oxford. And if you kind of look at the trend, too, with the ADs, they're, they're yeah. younger. Uh, mm-hmm. Marshall Corsi over at York High is, is a bit of a younger guy, Hawkins too. Hawkins at West York's a younger guy. Brandon yeah. Renault at New Oxford's like 25. Yeah. Right. So there, there's a lot of trend here in York County. It seems like that the ADs are going younger and younger. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it, Sounds it, like a story idea. It, it ignites the spark. Yeah, it does. It ignites the spark in some of these, these teams and some of the programs to kind of think outside the box. Yeah. And uh, be interesting to see how he, how he does. Uh, a lot of his teams are going to have some some turnover. York Suburban traditionally very very good at track and cross country. Uh, that's their top sports. Football they had a great year this year. They lose a lot. Basketball is kind of being rebuilding stage. So we'll see how Marshall and Triggs work together there. Matt, you got to see our two newest York Adams lacrosse teams uh, mm-hmm. battle each other. Delone is you know building their program. They're going to be varsity officially next year. Dover in the same boat. Dover we did a story last week. It's been you know building up for they just started this year yeah yeah five or six years they've been they've been trying to get something going they finally on the field this year so uh i guess what sense did you see how much further they, do they still have to go and 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 uh how cool is it to see the two newest teams it was definitely cool to see two and delone started last year since so their second year as a program over the first year um definitely cool to see two new teams out there uh delone won 13 to 12 in ot alec mason had a game winning goal in overtime which is really cool to see yeah, delone got cool. super excited that's the second one they've had this year so they, they mobbed him afterwards uh dover was winning most of the game they seem to be in, in, in control they're up eight four early in the second half so i thought they were going to kind of have it but uh as far as saying how far along they are it's tough to say because really like, until they start playing the top teams you're not really gonna really know how mm-hmm. close they are and i was talking to uh, jeff barker dover's coach afterward and he, that's exactly what he said he's like we really compare ourselves to a team like delone no disrespect just because they're in a similar boat to us it's the teams that we know are really good that right. we have to look at and say all right they're there how do we get there too how do we build our program to where they are now dover when i talked to them said that they're probably two or three years away from competing with the big right. boys how far is delone away there? i think they kind of had that same mindset and i think it's an, a good way to, to talk about it too because really none of these teams know and a lot of them too like they're still club or jv programs right now and they still have a bunch of seniors on their team mm. so next year's gonna be tough because they're gonna lose a couple of the guys that really kind of help them build this and they're going to be making the jump to varsity. So it's kind of a double rebuilding yeah. stage right there. So that's going to be really tough for them, especially for DeLone. They're going to lose, like, uh, I think six seniors, and a couple of them were kids that had played before. But DeLone was interesting. A bunch of the kids that started the program are from the Westminster, Maryland area, so they played growing up. Mm-hmm. So they're going to lose those kids. So it's really going to be uh, getting more uh, club kids from the Maryland area, getting them to DeLone, and, kind of, and building that along with kids in the you know Hanover area who actually want to play lacrosse. It'll be interesting to see how much the effect that you know seeing these kids this year play will influence the talent pool next yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll see about that. Christian, going back to you, Kohler Classic this past weekend, uh, probably either the first or second biggest regular season volleyball tournament we have around here. I heard Northeastern lost, though. Yeah, they made it to the semifinals. Parkland, ironically, was the same team they saw last year in the championship game at the Kohler, and they lost in this year. Uh, they fell to them in the semifinals. Uh, it, it was a long, obviously a very long day of volleyball. Reese Devilbiss had missed a good chunk of the tournament after hurting himself. Uh, it was a finger and an ankle injury, if I'm not mistaken, that he suffered during the first game of the tournament. I mean, like, we're talking round robin kind of yeah. early on, first game of the day. And, and that's uh, tough. If, for people who don't know who yeah. Reese Devilbiss is, Ohio State committed All-American uh, last year as a junior. Yeah, and he, you know, he's knocked out. He played the second game, and then they pulled him, and he didn't play the rest of the day, and they still made it to the quarterfinals without one of the best players in the state. Mm. Um uh, they may, still made it to the semifinals, excuse me. Dallas Town had a pretty good day. They made it to the second round. York Suburban made it to the quarterfinals. Central made it to the second round. It was it, Obviously, a lot of those teams would have liked to have won the Kohler, but for a lot of those coaches, it was really about getting the opportunity to see some of those other big-time schools in the state that they normally wouldn't see unless they were playing in the state tournament or the district tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really was the focus of the day, was to take that opportunity to see what those those teams are like how their teams match up and kind of make those adjustments before they get to you know districts and, and state tournament play uh, the color classic for people who don't know named after the the color family a husband and wife back in the 80s at central who really helped uh, they're kind of volleyball pioneers in the area uh, volleyball kind of blew up in york county in the 80s and 90s and they were a big part of that by 
by making things like this, creating tournaments and, and invitationals and things like that. And they helped make it big at central and central, you know, has, has gone on to districts, you know, 20 something out of 30 years or whatever it is. So, uh, they're a big part of that. So, uh, cool to see in Northeastern can just shake it off. Like you said, they, they were out without devil Bist. you know, this doesn't hurt their main goal, which is to go back and win a four state title. Right. You know, this doesn't affect that really at all. Uh, so they'll still be on track. Uh, the Arctic Blast uh, was pretty much a Southwestern show. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It seemed like everyone I was reading about in your story was a Southwest kid. It was all Southwestern. It was uh, Lynn Meridian. I mean, you could basically, we were joking uh, while we were there, you could basically uh, rename it, you know, the Meridian Invitational. Wow. Because she's, last year she broke four uh, Invitational records, and this year she added, a, she broke one of her own from before and then broke a fifth one. So now five of the, you know, eight or nine girls track uh, records belong to Lynn Meridian. It's pretty impressive. And uh, Southwestern head coach after Bruce Lee, he's been there for 31 years. He said she's the best female track athlete she's, he's ever seen in the league, in the county. Wow. Uh, and he's been there for like 30 years. Yeah. So he's seen you know thousands probably mm-hmm. at this point, and she's the best one. I mean, she just had a day. I mean, she, when she was doing hurdles and, and sprints, she was just so far out ahead of the pack. It was it was basically who was just going for second place after wow. that. Uh, Teresa Petcher, a Petcher from DeLone, had mm-hmm. a pretty good showing. I saw, I believe, Zach did a story on her. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shaw, they just call him D Shaw from Southwestern. He's a pretty funny kid, right. uh, a Baltimore guy. I think only a sophomore or a Maryland guy, not a Baltimore guy. But um, his teammates on the sideline saw me walking by and get ready to watch the race. It was like the, it was like the hundred hundred meter sprints, and they were like, "Just watch this, watch the show he's about to put on." And I was like, "I haven't even heard of this kid before. What are you talking about?" And this kid just took off and just blew away everyone. Uh, he came in, I think, sixth uh, in qualifying wow. and just blew away everyone and was so far ahead of the pack so it was pretty cool to see and his teammates mobbed him because you know they they correctly predicted that he would right be. um but yeah it was it was a pretty good the weather was great it was a cool day uh out in northern you know tons of people come out there you know that's been going on for decades now mm-hmm. so uh overall it was a cool event you know, southwestern you know had a lot trevor grim from bermudian yeah i was gonna say it seemed like a lot of people from my area that you the hanover adams yeah. area really had big days yeah trevor grim had a big day i believe he broke his own record uh and uh, on the track and he he took home first place uh there, i mean there was a whole, a whole every a lot of the events besides the ones meridian room was pretty close right um but there, there was a whole bunch of records i think it was 40 or 50 personal records were set throughout the day there's all kinds of good stuff going on central it was a cool story they took a freshman and a sophomore who had never done a triple jump or a long jump before and put them into the event at the arctic invitational on the big stage um it's kind of a teaching moment for them and they they i mean they they held their own they did pretty well but it was, it was cool to see you know you had kids who had been doing this for a decade and then you had a kid right. who was doing it for the first time and that's they, really nerve-wracking it was nerve-wracking yeah but they all the other kids were kind of helping them point out like hey you, you move your footwork cool. here yeah. and the other coaches even the even the officials who were you know timing it and measuring it were like hey you should try and take off from here uh, so the entire you know group used it as a teaching moment which is pretty cool uh they have the york suburban uh, relays are this week. That's the next big track invitation. That's Friday. We'll be there for coverage as well. Uh, all right, guys, moving on here. Game balls. Matt, who you got for a game ball this week? Uh, well, two. I'll give one to Alec Mason of Delone Catholic Lacrosse for having the game winning goal in OT. And secondly, to uh, Julia Wivel of Spring Grove Softball. A big game yesterday. Picked six, pitched six plus innings against Gettysburg. Struck out 13 batters in a 5 3 win. She got taken out in the last inning. And uh, she had an RBI double, too. So I was talking to uh, Coach Mar- Mark Hall afterward, and I have a story online about how they've been struggling to replace the offense of Haley Norton, which is kind of understandable. She's yeah. one of the best offensive players the York League has seen in a while, but uh, they're starting to progress a little bit offensively, and she is the best pitcher, Julia, on the team, but she's going to need to step up hitting-wise to the rest of the year if they're going to make some noise. I remember seeing Julia last year, and she was good last year. As it, uh, I think she was only a sophomore last year. Junior yeah, she's year. a junior now. Uh, as a sophomore, she was good, but she had a lot of raw talent. You know, She had a lot mm-hmm. of strikeouts, but a lot of walks still. Yeah. And Coach Hall last year was kind of saying, once she kind of hones that and, and tones it down, She's going to be a heck of a talent. And now I've seen, you know, the last couple of headlines I've seen about her is 13 strikeouts, 12 strikeouts, 10 strikeouts. And that makes sense because I had her as one of, uh, I think, our players to watch. She had a lot of wins last year, pretty high batting average too, but she, her ERA was kind of higher than most pitchers. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of tell that she probably had some control issues. But she's uh, pitching really well this year, and, and Springer needs her because they definitely, uh, they've got some good players, but if they're going to make any noise this year, they're going to need her to step up. Christian, moving over to you. Who you got for a game ball this week? Uh, Kirsten Lake, goaltender for the York Catholic girls uh, lacrosse team. She had a Another solid game yesterday, eight saves. Spent a good chunk of the season splitting time with Sam McGuire before mm-hmm. co- uh, before 
head coach uh, Lincecum over there decided that it seems like he's been going with Lake more and more on a consistent basis, and she's proven uh, to have had a really good season so far and standing up well to to most offenses she's seen. So Kirsten Lakes gets my game ball this week. Yeah, she she had a great performance yesterday. She stopped eight of twelve. Uh, she held Red Lines offense with Peyton Shima and Alyssa Adams, who are two of the top goal scorers. She held them to four as a team, four goals. Uh, in a big win and she kind of stepped up this year because their original goaltender Schellenberger uh, decided not to play or had an injury at the last moment um, and couldn't play so Kirsten Lake who's kind of in that second role last year was pushed into the first role late this year she's taken over Sam McGuire has been a solid backup for them as well uh, I'm also going York Catholic lacrosse I'm going Lindsay Kina uh, 10 goals three assists yesterday uh, pretty big day for her that was her best performance of the season probably the best of her career you know she said and coach Linthicum said uh, I mean, at halftime, I think she had seven goals and two assists, and she kind of cruised in the second half, and they kind of pulled back. But 22-4 to four win, it was kind of a uh, – they're just kind of putting their foot on everyone's throat right now. It was a kind of a statement win that, you know, they're the biggest, baddest team right now. They're at, they've outscored their opponents. It was like 157-38 to 38 this year, some crazy number wow. like that. They're giving up a league-best 4.2 goals a game, which is in lacrosse's – you know, this is a crazy number. Most lacrosse games are 15, 16. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they haven't given up more than seven goals in the game all year. There's a story up on game time if you want to check it out. They're kind of uh, head, and, head and shoulders above everyone else except Kennerdale. Uh, it's going to come down to them or Kennerdale, it looks like. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who wins there. But uh, Red Line was kind of in that next tier. Right. And we we thought maybe Red Line can give them a game and push themselves into that top tier. And then 22-4 to 4 yeah, that's, that's at Red tough. Line uh, kind of put that to bed. So now Susky, uh, Kennerdale, and York Catholic on the girls' side have pretty much put themselves uh, in, in a different kind of league right now as the postseason near so i'm going with Lindsay kina as my player of the game guys anything else before we head to the break i think that's all all right well, we can come back we're gonna talk some track and field and we're gonna talk some baseball we'll see you in a few minutes sure the revolution baseball club owns this radio station but let me take a moment to reassure you there's no gratuitous rooting for the hometown team and the Rams have won this game. no hype this crowd going crazy we just give you unbiased calls of every Rebs game this season. This game's over! Nope. Swing the best. No homers here. It is gone! All right, maybe a little. And let the party begin! The revolution plays here. The new Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Waking up with the Zabe. The Steve Zabin Show. And we've got a Breathe Right strip controversy now heading into the Belmont. How come nobody in the annals of horse racing history thought to define whether or not you can wear a horsey Breathe Right strip? Isn't this the equivalent of a hood scoop on a car? Your quarter panels are up eighth of an inch higher than mine. That allows for a little aerodynamic mess underneath the vehicle. Join me, Steve Zabin, mornings at 6 on Sports Radio 1350 WO. YK. Looking for something cool to do this weekend? Come to the coolest place in town and learn to play hockey or figure skate at the York Ice Arena. The York Ice Arena offers a learn to skate program for skaters of all ages and abilities. Directed by ISA and USFSA qualified instructors. Skating classes range from beginner to freestyle. Hockey classes cover the basics of the game. All classes include free skate rental and five free skating passes so you can try out your new skills. And remember, the coolest place in town is also available for the coolest birthday party in town. Host your birthday bash in group spaces or with a private ice rental. Public skating at the York Ice Arena is available afternoons, evenings, and weekends. Skate for just $7 and rent your skates for just $3. Plus, you can save with discount passbooks. Oh, and ask about gift cards and kids' prepaid debit cards. So if you're looking to learn something cool, come to the coolest place in town and learn to skate at the York Ice Arena. For more information and to register, go to York skate.com money and business are essential to the strength of a community so is cheering and celebration and music and fun that's why york revolution games concerts youth sports special events and more happen at a place called people's bank park people's bank has been serving york county for more than 150 years always cheering always celebrating always committed to the things that make york county great and to you having a great time at people's bank park People's Bank. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Mic check. Dan Patrick. He's uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Heinz Ward told me that, uh, you know, he would lie to stay on the field. So he said, look, it's our job to deceive to get back in there. Have you done it? Uh, Yeah, I have. I think I did a lot more when I was younger. I think now with all the 
stuff coming out and all these players and the things that are happening, I think it's the awareness has been raised, the level has been raised, so I think it, it happens less frequently. But I think for the most part, players uh, are, are taking it very serious when it's a pretty good bell ring. Are you hit differently now than, say, first two years in the league? Uh, in what in what ways? Like, are defenders, defenders. hitting me different because yeah. of the rules? Yeah. I don't think so. I think I, I have always taken, um, you know, it, it's good and it's bad. I think that some officials have uh, allowed play to kind of play on a little bit. I, I don't think their whistle's quite as quick with me. I love it. The Dan Patrick Show. <laughs> On Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. At Northwestern Mutual, we take a disciplined and balanced approach to financial planning. Together, we'll help build your financial future on time-tested principles, not market trends, so you can take advantage of life's opportunities. To learn more, contact me, Dan McGarry, at my office on a square in York. Look for the blue awnings. Who's helping you build your financial future? The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, sports fans, great news. Now you can listen to Sports Radio 1350 anywhere with the new WOYK mobile apps. Stranded in Siberia? No problem. Kidnapped by wolves? It's not as bad as you may think. Wherever you are, WOYK is with you on the brand new mobile apps. York's only local sports station just went mobile and global. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Your county, your team. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in in sports. Game day of game time PA on Sports Radio 1350. In the first segment, we forgot to give out our athletes of the week, or at least acknowledge the athletes of the week. <laughs> so we can do that now. On the girls' side, uh, there was 874 total votes. The winner, uh, she won by 23 votes, was Dolores Silver, Southwestern Lacrosse goalie. Uh, she's a senior. She stopped 20 shots in their win over Rival Spring Grove, a 15 10 win. Southwestern's been getting hot lately. Uh, they've won five of six. She's number one in save percentage this year. She's one of the tops. Uh, in save she was our first team all league goalie last year she's been a starter for three years now we've seen her plenty yeah i saw her against new oxford and, and she faced a barrage of shots that game and gave up 18 goals but made a ton of good saves too so she's definitely a very good goalie she's kind of the the lone holdover uh she's she's still there from the teams the southwestern teams that were dominant two or three years okay. ago uh silver was young and starting for them and then all the other pro- players you know uh transitioned out and, and she's kind of the senior leader mm-hmm. now but uh she's been a great goalie this year she'll you know uh early candidate for uh goalie of the year again or first team right. goalie again uh second place this week in the vote was natalie cut right dover softball went three for five the grand slam in their 12 and dover's 12 nine win over gettysburg cut right hit 559 with three homers uh last year leading them into division two crown she's a james madison commit she also just got her 100th career hit uh this week congrats to natalie cut uh on the boys side i believe trevor Grimm was the winner i'll pull it up here for you in a second let me double check um. Yeah, on the boys' side, 992 total votes. Trevor Grimm, we talked about him already. Bermudian track and field won the 110 hurdles with a time of 15.71 seconds at the Arctic Blast. He also picked up a second place finish in the 300 hurdles, which kind of reversed his uh, qualifying. He qualified first for the 300 hurdles and finished second. He qualified second and finished first in the 110 hurdles. Uh, Eastern York's Evan Whitman scored five goals in a 16-11 upset win over Red Line that really turned some heads in the York Adams lacrosse scene. Eastern with a big win there. Uh, also scored twice against Dallas Town. He finished second in the voting. Guys, moving on to some baseball talk. Uh, we haven't seen Matt Brooks recently with Spring Grove, but Division One Dallas Town is also at the top there. Riley Hamburger has just been off the charts so far. Right. Um, all of Division Well's, all of Division One's playing pretty well. They're all 500 or better in Division play. Uh, have you guys seen anything from from those teams? I saw Central earlier this year. They they were struggling early and and kind of heated up later. Uh, but really, it's been it's been the Dallas Town. So sure. yeah, so Dallas Town against Spring Grove, which was a very good game. Spring Grove won that one five to two. But that'll definitely be a game to watch again next time they play. Uh, and both of those coaches, when I talked to them, they said that watch out for Red Line. That's a team that could sneak in and make it really a three team race for uh, for Division One there. Yeah, we've seen a little bit at a uh, Red Line Christian. You saw them earlier this year, mm-hmm. uh, and and they they did, they got off to a pretty good start. I think they've kind of slowed down a little bit since then. Yeah, it looked like they got off to a promising start. They're hitting. I mean, they blew out Hershey when they played them to open the season. 
Um, and, you know, their hitting hitting was pretty good, but you could see some certain things that that weren't kosher. They were, um, you know, they kind of took their foot off the gas late in the game. Obviously, when you have such a big lead, it's easy to do, but you know, there were little things that you could notice. Hershey was getting on base. There were little errors in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they allowed Hershey to score a couple runs, but that's obviously going to happen. But still, there were little things you could see that. Um, you know, they were going to have to work on it. They were going to have to nitpick a little bit. But uh, it looked like at the beginning of the year that they were a team that was going to be nor- towards the top. It was going to be with the battling with the Dallas to- Towns and now the, the Spring Groves. And even Southwestern, uh, Matt, from your area, just snuck up there. They're 4-2 in the division. They're uh, in third place right there on the heels of Dallas Town and Spring Grove. Yeah, I mean, and they just beat, I think, uh, Spring Grove last week. So they're definitely a team to watch out for. And Spring Grove has definitely been the kind of team after winning Division One last year, the, the team that other teams were setting their sights for. And that's what uh, Coach Kevin Steffler said when I talked to him. He's like, we need to adjust that we're not taking people on surprise like we did last year when people thought they were rebuilding they had all juniors in their lineup right. and then won the won the division and uh yeah so southwest is definitely uh i mean who knows if they can actually like make a run at it but it does show that division one is just really deep this year which is good for uh good for the division good for just the, the sport in this area if you have good games happening all the time for the rest of the year and it makes those last couple of meetings if they see each other down very the important yeah exactly yeah, the, as we said, the, the entire division is at least 500 in division play. So a lot of that's crazy. There. Yeah, uh, I mean, Red Lion Central, New Oxford, all three and three in division, tied for technically last place <laughs> in the division, um, and pretty much every team is at 500 above overall. Uh, in Division Two, Northeastern's been on a roll. They've won four in a row and got a few, few big wins last week. Uh, they struggle a little bit out of the gate at, with their non-conference okay. schedule, uh, three and three. But with uh, Adam Kipp and Cody Reese are there, they've turned things around. Jonah Latshaw, kind of the spark plug in the outfield, uh, kind of the do it all guy, almost like a Ellsbury or Brett Gardner type player, like that, right. that small speed yeah. guy, that, uh, uh, or a Pedro- maybe not a Pedroia. I don't know. I don't know who I'm thinking of. Ellsbury and Gardner are probably good comparisons. Those are probably the best ones for him. Uh, so they've been on a roll. Uh, Division three is still tight. Eastern York with their pitching is starting. Yeah, to they have really good pitchers. Uh, they're four and one division. Suburban and Littlestown both four and two. Uh, Matt, have you seen anything out of Littlestown so far? You heard anything about those guys? I know like uh, Brady Topper's a good player for them. They got a new coach this year too, so they were kind of rebuilding a little bit. But it's good to see they're making a run. Um, and I know in Division Four, I think Delone is is and Biglerville are kind of the teams that are really battling out. Biglerville got off to a great start this year. Yeah, Biglerville. Uh, I thought we talked with Zach last week. We thought they were going to kind of slow down a little bit, but they're seven and one in division right now. Right. Seven and three overall. And your Catholic and Delone Catholic each have one loss in division, so that's a three team race right yeah. now. Uh, York Catholic and Delone, we, we expected to be there at the top battling for it. Biggerville's kind of been a little bit of a surprise for us. Uh, but that's going to come down the wire. It looks like 7-1, and 4-1, one, 4-1, and one, four and one, the top teams uh, in the division right now. Uh, we'll see if they can catch up to Biggerville. Mm-hmm. Uh, track, we talked about the Arctic Blast. Lynn Meridian uh, did her thing. Southwestern's off to another great year in track. Eastern York still undefeated on, on the boys. Uh, and girls side, Trevor Grimm had a great showing from Bermuda. Right. Uh, another Bermudian athlete, it was, it was cool to see Tessa Rupert, a, a long jumper. And triple jumper missed last year. She had a great sophomore or freshman campaign. Missed last year as a sophomore with an uh, ACL injury. Oh wow! So she was finally coming back this year, and then she hurt her ankle two days before the invitational. So she was able to do it, but wasn't able to do it uh, at full speed. But it was cool for her. That's a shame, but it's at least she got to get out there again, which is nice. Yeah, it was cool for for her even to to be there. She would have liked to put out on a, a little bit better show, but uh, cool to see her there. Um, Delone freshman Petra, we talked about being off to a great start as well uh to just run through and update you guys on the girls side southwestern spring grove both undefeated in division mm-hmm. one uh york suburban eastern york tie for tops in division two delone catholic running away with division yeah three, they're as we by far the best team uh i mean they've just got a loaded their whole uh line is pretty solid we saw petra uh we saw on the girl side we saw lily singleton put on a good show for them uh as well they had some a uh, couple other ones as well so uh pretty much as expected on the girl side boys side red line dallas town one and two in track, Gettysburg, Suburban, Eastern, all tied for number one right now. Uh, Gettysburg wasn't there. They were at a different invitational. They were gotcha. the Cook Invitational. But we heard a lot of fans uh, talking about them, talking about Ray Dillard. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he's course. amazing. Uh, the the state champion last year in Littlestown, number one in Division Three. So uh, some Hanover Air Adams teams running away with, with track and field. Yeah, yeah. Our area's uh, got to control one sport, right? So <laughs> I mean, they had wrestling in the winter, and they've got track now in the spring. Not too bad. All right, uh, any guys? Any other thoughts on track and baseball? We're gonna wrap this up and, and hurry into volleyball and softball. I think you covered everything yeah. with track earlier. Yeah. All right, sounds good. When we come back from the break, uh, we're gonna talk lacrosse, quick volleyball, and uh, and softball. We'll see you in a minute. So it's York Revolution baseball season. And good! A walk off home run. It's a double play. Unbelievable! And the Rams have won this game. Are you kidding me? This crowd going crazy. Can you believe it? Cue up the cannon. This baby's over. Yep. 
step, it's kind of exciting. The Revs play here. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Security in life isn't something you just wish for. You build it with a strong financial plan. Start with Northwestern Mutual. Together, we'll design a disciplined and balanced approach to financial security because reaching your goals is something we both want to work toward. To learn more, contact me, Dan McGarry, at my office on the square in York. Look for the blue awnings. Who's helping you build your financial future? The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Previously on the York Revolution pregame show. Everett George is our interview guest. Everett was signed up. Was it the whole homestand? Yeah, the whole homestand. And which was how many games? Uh, Seven games. And you lasted in your role how many games? Uh, One game. Have you been fired anywhere before? Never. Postgame meal came down and it was... Pulled pork and beans. I said, well, where's the buns? Where's the soda? Where's the water? And the coleslaw didn't come down till after everything was out. But I know what I can do. I can make a meal better with pulled pork, with beans. That's the reason I got fired, because I asked too many questions, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they did me a favor. I don't have to. I, I can have now. I can have six days off. Rebs Baseball. On Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. The puck drops here. Well, with the shot, score! Sports Radio 1350, your home for Hershey Bears hockey. Casey Wellman has won it in overtime for Hershey. And the Washington Capitals. Here in a shot, they score! Defending the Den and rocking the Red all season. Catch the Bears and the Caps on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. First in York, first in sports. Now we're having a party, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is good old-fashioned fun. And it's right here on WOYK. Oh, man, is this stupid. Talk lacrosse, softball, and volleyball, and then we're going to head right into the Caps pregame before they get started uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers. Matt, you're a Flyers fan, right? Yes. Can I ask you quickly about the <laughs> Flyers fans' behavior? Oh, I, I was actually—I thought you, you might ask me this on air. Um, and look, ever, the excuses are that you know it's not the whole fan base, and that you know this happens at other places, and every fan base has bad fans, but. It's not acceptable to have, and it might have been 1% throwing their shiny bracelets onto the ice. You can't do that kind of right. stuff. It's it's one thing to boo, you, but you can't. I, I, I see all these people on Twitter like, oh, well, we paid for our ticket. It doesn't matter if you paid. You're not allowed to do something that stops the game. Right. And especially in Philadelphia, one of the things are, mostly on Twitter, right, and you see, I'm only saying Twitter because you see people come out on social media. Mm-hmm. Most of the Philadelphia fans, which is the people who weren't throwing bracelets, are like, this makes us look bad. I can't believe this happened again. And the people who are probably the ones who did it or supported it are like, yeah, we're big, bad Philly. We'll do that. And that's the problem because, right. like, that's at how this the stereotype continues. Exactly. It's like, because it's really a small portion of the fans that. And that's how it is with any case. You know, no one's going to pay attention when the fans just politely clap. You pay attention when they do something dumb. Mm-hmm. And that happens everywhere. But Philadelphia has this reputation, and it won't go away until people stop doing stuff like this. And it's a very small group, and it shouldn't represent everyone, but it kind of does. And you, it, that's what happens when you have a couple people acting out. And until those people stop trying to be the ones who are like, yeah, we'll do stuff like this. We, we want to throw stuff on the ice. It's not going to change. But that wasn't acceptable. Uh, it was a shame on a night where they were honoring the, their owner, Ed Snyder, who just passed away. That's what the bracelets were handed out for. That they kind of disgraced themselves at the end in terms of what could have been a great night into really a terrible game for the team and a terrible moment for the fans. Yeah, I saw Ed Snyder's daughter tweeted that she was kind of disappointed. Definitely, uh, yeah. disappointed in that. It was. I thought the PA announcer did pretty well. Yeah, Lou Nolan. Shout out to Lou Nolan of the Flyers for telling fans to have some class. Um, a lot of great Flyers fans out there. They're very passionate. I'll give them that. And I, I love being a Flyers fan. I love being a Philadelphia fan. It's just a few individuals and that's what that's what happens and I, i'll say it to my fellow flyers fans it's a shame that we get represented by the, the ma- minority but that's what happens it really is you, and i'll credit flyers fans on twitter because uh, or philly fan base in general because after the uh, re- initial rush where there was some you know defending it after that they kind of police themselves like the rest of the, the league didn't have yeah to, the rest of the fan bases didn't have to jump on them because the philly fans were all over 
themselves for, which is, you know, they police themselves. With right. Cool. And hopefully we get a, a one win in game five so we don't get swept. It's going to be tough. I don't see them coming back and winning the series, but still a, a good year for the Flyers to make the playoffs. They're not a Stanley Cup contender like the Capitals are. A very young team. They'll, they'll be there for sure. In, in we two, certainly hope so. In another year, in, in another year or two. Uh, and then the Rangers, we're going to have some bracelets. I saw uh, as well. Christian, you got to see the Rangers fans firsthand when you are up in New York. Yeah, no one threw, no one threw bracelets onto the ice, so no. they were behaved. <laughs> Red Wings fans used to throw <laughs> octopus onto just, the ice yeah. so uh, someone threw a catfish <laughs> on the, on the yeah ice the other night, so you know the stranger things have been thrown <laughs> on i don't know how you get a catfish in the stadium to throw it one <laughs> to the ice anyway or why do you want to uh anyway we're gonna jump in some lacrosse talk now good transition there from catfish and hockey to york adams lacrosse uh we we i talked earlier the york catholic girls have just been dominating uh canada girls have just been pretty much as dominating uh those two battle next week and you know winner basically has the uh, handles on the league title, at least the regular season league title. Uh, York had the girls just, their defense just is suffocating. I mean, they don't give you any easy shot. To get a shot off against mm-hmm. them, you're going to have to go through or around three people. Yeah. Uh, they, have, they got Mara Palandro, all league defender, going to Kennesaw State back there. They got Pagrifa back there. Kirsten Lake, who Christian mentioned as a, as a, as a game ball candidate, yeah. uh, has been just stellar in, in goal. And I asked Lindsay Keena, who has scored 10 goals afterward, what makes you guys so great? And she had a quote where she said, it's not just one weapon or two weapons like some teams have. Mm-hmm. New York Catholic has a whole arsenal of weapons. Yeah. Um, you know, on any given night, Anna Linthicum can put up eight or nine goals. Lindsay Keenan can put up eight or nine goals. Lisa Casa Grande is one of the best shooters in the league. And then that's just an offense. And then they had the best defense in the league and one of the best goaltenders in the league, too. So all around, one of the best teams, if not the best team, New York Catholic's had. So they expect to make a big, big uh, postseason run. And they know defense wins championships. And that's what they're banking on is their defense. Uh Red Lion girls, uh, we thought you know they were making a statement. Right. They won five in a row. They were kind of stepping up, and then last night was a little bit of a pushback for them. But um, I mean, they kept fighting to the end, and and they they didn't hang their heads or anything like that. They, it's a learning experience for them, basically, to to play your Catholic. Uh, the boys side is is completely wide open. I'm looking at the standings now. There are six teams uh, within a game of each other for the division mm-hmm. the league, league lead right now. Central York, it's kind of flown under the radar. They're uh, eight and two overall, six and one in the division. Red Lions six and one in the division. Their only loss was kind of a slip up to Eastern York, who's not having a good year at all. So uh, surprised to see that Susky starting to catch fire like we thought they would. They're six and two in division now. Suburban has Mailman and Sipes. They're five and two in division. York Catholic and Dowstown each five and two. They've both been on fire lately as well. So eventually someone's going to have to pull away from the pack. You would expect, or everyone, or you have six teams fighting for four spots come league playoff time. It's fun to have a uh, you know that many teams kind of fighting for the spots. Some of the other sports like maybe softball where it's a few teams are dominating. We kind of know what those uh mm-hmm. league tournament is going to look like. So it's kind of cool for boys lacrosse to see so many teams going for a few spots. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll see uh tomorrow I will be at Red Line versus Suburban and boys lacrosse maybe that'll push either Suburban kind of out of that race or pull Red Line back into mm-hmm. the muck as well. So we'll see how that uh shapes out. Suburban gave Central York who's in first place uh a fight and a win. Suburban won that one at the buzzer with Mike Sipes with a, a game winner at the buzzer there in overtime against Central York. That's their only loss so far um, in division play. He scored so, at the, like at the buzzer. I guess time was running out. A game winner. In gotcha. So, <laughs> so technically, they made their own. Right. Uh, they the, that's they, like double pressure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so they they got a big win there. Uh, Dallas Towns Jack Marks. Congrats to him. He officially signed the Frostburg State in Western Maryland. A good lacrosse program. Oh. Uh, basically our best goaltender on the boys okay. side him and rainer are usually one two in, in that category um but yeah we saw susquehanna christian we saw them alive they've gotten hot lately yep. uh when I mean, he, even when we saw them they looked like a good team there was no doubt about that it was just them kind of hitting that that rhythm i guess and when we saw them they kind of had issues it seemed like with chemistry you know there's a lot of there was bad body language there's more than a quarter's worth of penalties mm-hmm. um so i guess they've gotten that you know straightened out it seems like yeah. yesterday in the win dorian faster had eight goals and anthony Devison had eight goals so they're starting to find the scoring touch uh which they were struggling with and nick chamberlain who we thought at goalie might be one there uh not a weakness but something that would come along late in the season he has he's improved tremendously he's won the top five in save percentage now and people are wondering how their goaltending would be so they've got that figured out so now like we said, there are five or six legitimate teams, and even West York, who's in seventh place right now, that is a defending champion. They've beaten some of the best teams, so there's still seven teams right now fighting for four spots and then fighting for one league title. So uh, we'll see how they how they come out. Uh, volleyball, Christian, we already mentioned the Color Classic Northeastern when they get Devil Bits back. We expect them to be right back on top. Red Line Central, Dowstown are all fighting for second place right now. Yesterday, Dowstown took Central to five games, uh, and Central was able to to finally pull away there at the end suburban's kind of fallen off after 
after a fast start. But any any thoughts or observations from you, Christian, on the the volleyball scene so far? Yeah, no, Central. I think has has um, you know I think they've lived up to the expectations. But I also think there's a part of the team or a sense that I get that you know some of these other teams are, are starting to gun for them, and they're you know they're not taking a step back, but they're not as strong as I think. I envisioned them to be when, you, when when everyone talked about volleyball around here. Obviously, they're a very good team, and that's not to say that they're not. But um, you can see certain things about their game, and, and when they play certain teams, when they were in the in the cold, you could see them when they played some of the tougher teams in the, in the state. Um, you know, they kind of they had a bit of a rough time in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So I think obviously, you know, Goodling is working with working on that every day and every game. They're they're focusing on improving and getting better, and I think that's what any coach will tell you. Uh, you know, including Matt Wilson of Northeastern, who, who are always the perennial favorites. But um, you know, I think Central Central has a, a couple little things to work on as they get closer and closer to you know postseason action. And that's part of why they play the Kohler. Um, obviously, they host it, but that's also part of the learning experience they go through. Dallas Town had a pretty good showing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they kind of they're up there, but they're not necessarily in the same league as I guess you could say a Northeastern or Central. Um, but I thought they had a pretty good showing. They had a pretty strong team. Um, you know. They made it to the second round, which was impressive nonetheless. So, um, you know, I was impressed with their play. And then, obviously, York Suburban, which has kind of been the breakout team early. Um, they've kind of gone through some roster issues on their side. And, uh, you know, they're trying to work through that. They had a pretty good shoe. And, again, they, you know, they made it pretty far, too, in, in the Kohler Classic. And you can see just from their, their play on the, on, the, on the court that they're a team that's really banded close together and that they're trying to put out their best effort. And then, you know, maybe they're not at the same level as a, as a Northeastern or a Central, but they're still giving them a lot of, a lot of fits. And they even beat Central earlier this season. Wow. So, um, you know, Suburban's a team that, while their record may indicate certain things and, and their, the last couple of games may not have the best, they're a team that – I think is only going to get better and better. Mm-hmm. Maybe not this year, but they're going to get better and better as the program in the new years to come. Definitely. And they were ranked top three in the state there for a while. They're fourth in the league right now. So uh, that shows you how good the York Adams league is as a whole. And right now I'm looking at it. There are eight teams within two games of second place right now. The Northeastern, you expect to run away with number one. Mm-hmm. So you're fighting for that second and third spot. And there are eight teams within uh, striking distance of that. And, uh, and you mentioned it. Central lost to Suburban. Suburban lost to Red Lion. Red Lion lost to Central. So everyone's <laughs> kind of beating each other up in that second tier. Uh, Dallas Town and Susky right there also at 3-2 in the division. They're trying to sneak into that top tier and see if they can make a run uh, to the postseason. Dallas Town has a lot of talent. they got Peyton Rank, who's one of the best players in the league there. Uh, Suburban, like you said, has some roster issues. Central, perennial favorite, but kind of maybe, uh, maybe a younger team than they're used to. Uh, Red Lion's on a mission. We did a story on them earlier this year. Cole Brillhart. Uh, Dylan Hildebrand, just a fantastic duo. They have a great team there, and, and then uh, Northeastern at the top. Uh, moving on quickly to softball, Matt, you did a roundup for us uh, late last week. Can you give us an update on some of the storylines we're looking at across the league? Well, basically, in uh, Division One, it's going to be Central York versus Dallas Town. I think you're seeing that today, aren't you? So that's going to be a down. huge matchup to see who's really the top team in, uh, in Division One. Central won the whole league last year, lost most of their roster, but one of those programs that always just kind of keeps retooling. Dallas Town really sees us this year with a pretty senior heavy lineup. I think you did a story on Jalen Harbold, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as just one of the top softball players around, so sh- um, that's a great uh, matchup right there. And then in our area, at Littlestown Division Three, they lost for the first time this year to Greencastle last week. But and that's probably a good uh, good lesson for them to play a team outside of the league because in Division Three they're going to dominate, and then Delone in Division Four they're probably going to run away with it with that division too. And then it's going to come down to the league playoffs with a. Uh, those kind of teams, and then uh, probably Susquehanna against Dover in Division Two. That's another good matchup right there. Yeah, and, and Dallas Town had a had a loss earlier this year. Their or their their one loss, uh, they lost to uh, Susky. And Susky's been really really good this year. I think they're in, um, leading Division Two, but Dover's pretty good in Division Two too. So that's going to come down to who wins that division. Yeah, Susky in the division and Dover. Susky's nine and zero overall, six and zero in Division Two. Dover seven and two overall, five and one. Yeah. Uh, and Dover has uh, Alyssa Lawton, who's a George Mason commit, and they got the JMU commit cut right who we mentioned earlier. Yeah. One hundredth career hit. Uh, last week, I am seeing, uh, as we talked about, I'm seeing Central versus Dallas Town tonight. Check back with game time later for coverage on that. Uh, that's a big battle. Uh, Dallas Town, if they want to win the division, you know, this is their first game against Central. It's at Central. This mm-hmm. is a big one for them. Uh, Central's been dominant as well. I mean, Rachel Rachel Butler's had a great year. Uh, Brianna Dobson, their catch Dobson, is really good. Yeah, they, but uh, they're got the. I don't know who's going to pitch today for Dallas Town, but usually it's Harbold. She right. almost always pitches, so that's maybe the best pitcher in the league or one of the best pitchers in the league so they're going to have to find a way to at least get a couple of runs off her if they want to win she definitely has a lot of control of a game when she's mm-hmm. out there I mean she a couple times the one time I saw her she worked herself into a gym and worked her way out of it so, right and you know the defense around her too has been pretty solid 
and we'll see if she can handle that that feisty central lineup. So they they played two games last year. Central won both uh, by a combined two runs, one That's... one run games both times. So we'll see what happens today. Guys, it was a shorter show. We we tried to pack as much as we could into a, a short time. Christian, Matt, thanks for joining me today. I, got, I hope you guys join us next week. Uh, same time next week. We'll see All you. All right. Let's see, go see you then. First in your first in sports. Your only local sports station. The News Sports Radio 1350. WOYK, York, Pennsylvania.